So in this video, we're going to look at some types of viscometers. Just before we get started, we're going to look at what a viscometer actually is. And the viscometer is an instrument used to quantify the viscosity of a fluid. So by knowing this, we can characterize the fluid accurately for use. Viscosity of a fluid can affect its performance, so it's an important parameter to determine. So we're just going to look at some popular viscometers. So the first one we're going to look at is the capillary tube viscometer. So capillary tube viscometers work by passing a fluid through a capillary tubes and measuring the time it takes to do this. From this, we can determine the volumetric flow rate and the viscosity. They are simple design and useful for semi or non-viscous fluids, but they can be quite time consuming and this is a disadvantage of using the capillary tube viscometers. Next, we're going to look at the coaxial viscometers. So the coaxial viscometers are just rotational viscometers and they work by passing a fluid through a rotary drum and calculating the viscosity from the measurement of the torque. They're accurate in measuring rheological properties of the fluid, yet it's impossible to maintain a constant temperature, which for some fluids can greatly affect the viscosity measurement because some fluids are really highly viscous at low temperatures and really low uh, in viscosity at high temperatures. So next on the list is the falling ball or cylinder viscometer. So the falling sphere or cylinder viscometer passes a ball or a cylinder through a cylindrical tube. The velocity of the ball is measured and then the viscosity of the fluid can be calculated from this. It's important to note that the falling ball is more common than the falling cylinder and this is just because the, cyl the cylinder is only used for high pressures and um, li foamy liquids. Next we're going to look at some viscometers with a non-contact drive. So these uh, non-contact viscometers use lasers or optical tweezers to precisely measure the viscosity of a fluid. They determine the viscosity of a fluid uh, through nanomechanical waves in the fluid. Um, they can only be used for transparent fluids, however, and they're typically used for nanofluids. They're also really expensive, so they're not used all the time, but they are used for nanofluids or transparent fluids. This is just a type of torque viscometer. So you have the spring viscometers. You also have load viscometers and other torque viscometers. Um, but the spring viscometer uh, uses a constant torque measurement to calculate the viscosity of a fluid. The viscosity is calculated by using the time it takes for the torque to get from a maximum amount to zero and then comparing it to the standard fluid. They're really inaccurate, however, um, but they do have this simple design and they're easy to use and they're typically used in really high pressure um, liquids. Next, we just have the disc viscometers. So the examined liquid is placed between parallel rotational discs or plates and the torque is measured and the viscosity is then calculated from that. The shear rate, however, is not constant throughout the plates and this is a major disadvantage to this viscometer. Just for some conclusions then, um, so the type of viscometer that you want to use really depends on the type of fluid first off. So whether your fluid is really highly viscous or not very viscous at all uh, would determine whether you would use a capillary tube or a falling sphere or um, a viscometer with a non-contact drive. Um, also the accuracy that you really wanted to and the simplicity or the sophistication of the design that you really want to have. Thank you for watching to the end of this video and I hope you learned something new. Thank you.